Greetings, gumshoes, detectives, and bibliophiles. It's Alan, back again with a review for I Dream of Indie. Today we're going to take a look at the video game adaptation of everyone's favorite detective mystery writer with Agatha Christie's Hercule Poirot, The First Cases. This detective mystery adventure was developed by Blazing Griffin and published by Mike Reitz. As a game based on one of the most famous literary detectives not named Sherlock Holmes, there are some lofty expectations to be had here. Does this game hold up? Well, let's put on our detective caps and investigate. So in this adventure, you play as a young and up-and-coming detective, Hercule Poirot. And I apologize if I can't pronounce this. He is a Belgian detective who was the focal point of many of Agatha Christie's adventures. Gameplay consists of exploring your surroundings, interacting with your environment, and interrogating the local residents as you try to gather evidence along with possible motives. As you explore your surroundings and gather evidence, you are brought to a series of sub-menus where you are tasked with trying to chain objects, events, and people together in order to unlock additional conversation paths, all with the end goal of discovering the guilty party. Essentially, the gameplay boils down to moving room to room and clicking on everything you can click on and hope you figure out what the game wants you to link together. This isn't a unique system by any means, as the gameplay loop is literally identical to another game in the genre I covered recently, The Murder Mystery Machine. The key difference between the two games, though, is that the system here is a lot more refined and contains so much more depth. Not only do you have to gather evidence from room to room, you have to parse through evidence between rooms, between different characters, and at times manipulate your surroundings in order to gather additional evidence. Complementing the depth of gameplay here are gorgeous visuals, and a dialogue that is fully voice acted. Not only reading, but hearing the words being spoken and picking up the tone, mannerisms, and inflections of each character really help enhance the overall experience. The music in the game can be a bit grating at times, however it does a fantastic job of setting the atmosphere. The entire first case takes place in the residence of a widowed aristocrat and her spoiled daughter, as the two of them berate their house servants. The voice acting fit each character well, and the music, while it got on my nerves after a while, fit the atmosphere of a home projecting a sense of nobility. Along with the solid sound design were the visuals that were incredibly easy on the eyes. Both the backgrounds and the character models have a high level of detail to them, and the artwork used for the character portraits captures a vibe of something being taken straight from a novel. I think it should be obvious here that I like this game. Now, before I can be accused of being an Agatha Christie homer or fanboy, when I first saw the title of this game, I thought Agatha Christie was the old lady from Murder, She Wrote. So clearly I'm not coming into this with any tear of rose-colored glasses about Agatha Christie. I did find some elements of the information gathering and event chaining to be a bit less obvious than it should have been. I also found really obvious connections that the game didn't, so I hit a point where I kept clicking until I just got the hint as to what the game wanted me to link together. So this wasn't a common occurrence though, as I had a lot of fun hunting down clues and enjoyed watching the game as much as I did playing it. While the gameplay doesn't reinvent the wheel, it builds and expands upon a solid formula used in games before it. The visuals look good and the voice acting has a solid effort put into it. So if you are a fan of Agatha Christie or mystery games in general, this is definitely worth picking up. I think that wraps things up here, so on behalf of I Dream of Indy, this is Alan signing off, and when are we going to get a game based on the Rockford Files? Alright everybody, this is Alan back again, and I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our Indie Warriors. Mitchell Hall, Bunny, Kevilo, Bill Takaz, Christian Cruz, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Peach, Adriana Amato, CJR, PSC, Seacoil, Skeptism, Jen Rose, Jesse, CPM, Julian Colbus, and JRSDA. Thank you all very much for supporting the channel. And if you want to learn how to become an indie warrior and fight against the Echo Chamber, check the description beneath the video.